I want to start with a little story. When I was a kid, maybe nine years old, I was walking home from school, and I was wearing these purple corduroy overalls and a frilly white shirt and these sparkly jelly shoes. I was humming a song I'd learned in chorus, and I thought to myself, man, I sound incredible. I was humming a little louder, you know, really getting into it when I noticed this guy out raking leaves in his yard. And as I walked by his house, I kind of peeked back. I, I assumed he'd be stunned, having just witnessed such a rare, magnetic gem of beauty and talent. But he's pretty much still just raking. I thought, well, he obviously has some important reason to pretend not to be impressed, which could only mean one thing. He's a talent scout with a sharp ear and eye for talent, and he's already plotting how to make me famous. <laughs> you could call that level of confidence delusional. You could even call it narcissism. But I'm going to call it radical vanity. And cultivating radical vanity is the only appropriate response to the current epidemic that we're facing of distorted, a uh, body-negative self-image held by most girls and women today. 91% of women diet. Only 2% consider themselves beautiful. Um, the number one concern for girls aged 11 to 24 is how their body looks. And 97% of women surveyed report having at least one I hate my body thought every single day. A lot of them actually reported having thoughts like that closer to 50 or 100 times a day, but just think about that for a second, 97%. That's everybody. Which means that hating your body has nothing to do with what your body actually looks like. Shame and hatred have become a habit. Disgust has become a cultural phenomenon. And Self-loathing has become the automatic lens through which we view ourselves. The way that most women talk to themselves it would be considered emotional abuse if it came from someone else. They stand in the mirror and they say things like, you are a fat, worthless pig, or no man will ever love you. Those are actual quotes from women surveyed the way that women see themselves has become something that's called a cognitive distortion. A cognitive distortion is a way that the mind convinces you of something that isn't true. Um, essentially, when you look at people around you, you are able to see accurately. Your eyes are naturally drawn to what's beautiful about them. But when you look at yourself, the distortion causes you to only see your flaws. And you end up kind of trapped in this funhouse, mean, mirror version of reality. <clears throat> The interesting thing about cognitive distortions is that the more you engage in distorted thought patterns, the stronger the neural pathways in your brain become for that distortion. Um, which basically means that the more you focus on your perceived flaws, the bigger and more glaring they're going to seem. Which, given how many of us are thinking, I hate my body every day, you can see how often we're greasing those neural pathways. But it's not just how we talk to ourselves that it reinforces this point of view, it's also how we talk to and about each other. There is a cultural assumption that women should look like the images we see in mainstream media and magazines and advertisement and entertainment. The distortion is built into our culture. Um, judging other women and body bashing are some of the most common ways that women can bond and we kind of think of those as harmless, you know, offhand comments and conversations, but they're actually reinforcing that cognitive distortion that you live in. They fuel the idea that there's only one right way to look. There's only one right way to have a body. Of course, we know that that's not true. Thankfully, our culture is starting to take the problem of low body image and low self-esteem seriously, and right now we have all kinds of movements who are starting to rise up. We have the fat acceptance movement, and health at every size. We have Dove campaigns encouraging girls to embrace their shapes. And a few brave clothing brands are employing model body diversity or taking vows to stop using Photoshop. I support these movements, and I hope that we continue to see more and more of them as time goes on. But to me, it feels a little bit like trying to fight the apocalypse with a spoon. 
We're trying to fight distorted, hyperbolic levels of self-loathing with moderate, polite levels of acceptance. And then we're wondering why it doesn't work. I think we need to fight fire with fire, or in this case, fight fantasy with fantasy. Our culture isn't going to change anytime soon, so waiting until self-love becomes the norm to love yourself is a pretty bad plan. I want to draw your attention for a moment and have you think about happiness. Happiness, it's been proven, doesn't come from something external. It's internal. It's something that's a choice. It's a, an outlook. And that outlook helps determine how you'll interpret everything that you encounter. The same is true of how you see yourself. You have the ability to choose and practice how you see yourself, and you can cultivate a point of view that's based in compassion, admiration, and pride. I call that point of view radical vanity. Interestingly, the word vanity is sort of meant to be an insult. It's meant to imply that somebody cares too much about themselves. Um, the definition is excessive pride in one's appearance and achievements. The root of the word is where the insult comes in. It's about being empty, vapid. Theoretically, someone who was extremely vain would be so consumed by how great she looked that she wouldn't have much else to offer. But in my experience, it's not having too much pride in yourself that creates vapidness. It's not having enough. When you spend so much of your time worried about how to get rid of your belly fat or draw attention away from your thighs, you don't really have that much left over to pursue your passions or make scientific breakthroughs or write the next great American novel. We've also been taught that being vain means being unkind. That someone who cares so much about themselves must judge others more harshly or be lacking somehow in compassion or empathy. But judgment and cruelty are most often seen in people with extremely low self-esteem, not extremely high. Think of a bully, for example. A bully is often the one who feels the most inadequate or the most insecure. Our insecurities bring out our worst selves. Feeling insecure makes us small. It makes us mean, and it makes us cowards. But instead of trying to control or stop the external forces that create those insecurities, let's just sidestep it altogether. I'm suggesting that every single one of us take responsibility for cultivating a new perspective on how we see ourselves, one that is ridiculously, excessively, and radically proud of how we look and who we are. And if you're thinking, well, good luck with that, I admit it can take a little creativity. But that should be fine, because odds are pretty good that you've been living in a distorted version of reality when it comes to yourself anyway. I'm just suggesting that you use that powerful imagination and make up a nicer one. What if you could see yourself, for example, through the eyes of a child who has no concept yet of shame or ugliness? Or what if you could borrow the eyes of a lover who sees every line and curve of your body perfect because they make up you? And hey, if you don't have a lover like that yet, make one up, because the reality has nothing to do with this. It's about taking responsibility for how you see yourself. Everything can be reframed if you approach it with curiosity instead of judgment. And more than that, I challenge you to approach it with a fantastical sense of wonder and delight. For example, <clears throat> I'm not going gray. It might look like it, but actually, I just have a whole bunch of new, super rad, blinged out natural highlights. And I don't have cellulite. I have fancy, embellished fat. It's like lacy decorations built into the backs of my thighs. This proud, whimsical point of view uh, doesn't just belong in your own head, either. I challenge you to take radical vanity to your friends, your family, and your community. Tell everyone you're doing an experiment, and that from now on, you only say nice things about yourself. Ask for support to stop apologizing for how you look and who you are. Refuse to stop body bashing or judging other women. Try to talk openly and confidently about what you like about yourself and encourage everyone around you to do the same. Imagine a world where when you give your friend a compliment, she responds with, thank you, I agree. <laughs> 
Or what if you could hear someone talk about how this new weight that she gained actually makes her feel really sexy and feminine? Just to be clear, I know that going from this world to a world in which all women feel unconditionally perfect is a bit of a stretch. But that's the nature of backlash. We're so deeply consumed by negativity right now, so far on that end of the spectrum. If we attempt to swing the pendulum as far as we can in the other direction, we might actually stand a chance of landing in the middle someday. <clears throat> it takes courage to cultivate radical vanity, and it takes patience, and it takes resilience because there's always going to be somebody there who's ready to tell you how you're wrong. Uh, but if the worst case situation here is that sometimes you feel more beautiful or more powerful or more magnetic than other people think you are, that's a pretty small price to pay. Personally, I never did get picked up and made famous by a talent scout, so I suppose it's possible I wasn't as adorable and talented as I thought. But that doesn't matter because confidence makes you brave. Pride makes you grow and expand. And they both help you push past fear so that you can go out into the world and do the things that are going to make you proud of who you are and what you have to offer outside of how you look. <sighs> Practicing radical vanity might start with your body. It might start with your appearances but it ends with you reclaiming your life and changing the world. Thank you. <laughs>